You can quickly make sketches of rooms in perspective. I see a lot of designers avoid sketching rooms in perspective because, come on, nobody has time. It's something that I long struggle with. Sometimes you just think it's easier if I just 3D model it, and it never is. And then I stumbled on a single page in one of my favorite drawing books. This one here, Creative Illustration by Andrew Loomis. It's so good. It's published in 1947. And really, creative illustration is so much about composition. And this page is actually in a section about staging scenes, not in a section about perspective drawing or technical drawing. The idea is the illustrator could use this technique to make fast sketches to find the best view to suit the advertisement. For busy interior designers and modern illustrators, this is so useful. And bonus, digital drawing cuts out the most tedious part of Loomis's process, and the Concepts app does it superbly. The technique on this page inspired an iPad workflow that unlocked my ability to quickly create quality sketches of entire rooms no faking at all no 3d models just quick perspective sketches that help me develop designs and bring my vision into focus so let's get into concepts and allow me to show you how i do this start with a floor plan so i just sketched out this little study space i have a couple chairs with some tables a fireplace don't use the pen that you use to sketch the floor plan i like to set my sorting to automatic but you're going to want to be on a different layer and then select some kind of construction pen. I like to do this. Set your smoothing to 100% so you get a perfectly straight line. So once you have the correct layer, and this one's called construction, which is what I call this pen, 100% smoothing, just go ahead and draw one line up from the corner. Make sure it's touching that corner. And then what I like to do is go ahead and select that. And turn partial on. And then copy it duplicate it and put it on the other corners that you would see in that view. I'm going to do this again. And if I'm looking this way, these are the two walls that I'm going to see. So then I want to just deselect that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my uh, layer with the floor plan and I'm just going to go ahead and select my plan. Boom. Now notice when I select this, I have partial off. That way it's not accidentally picking up these lines and moving them too, because the next part I'm going to duplicate this and then I'm going to drag it up. And what I like to do is I actually like to put this on a new layer. So what we wanna do is we wanna hang this floor plan somewhere off of these, what I call tent poles, these lines that we projected up from the corners. And this is gonna give us a good rough perspective. I kind of like to start with this back point because that'll give me an idea of how flat my view is. And you have to be careful if you hold on this for too long, it wants to do that image copy thing. So you kind of have to be quick about it. All right, yeah, I'm pulling it down. Just make sure you have that point right on there. This is already looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna uh, deselect that because I don't wanna move this point any longer. Then I'm gonna select this point. I'm gonna get that corner over on that line. This view is looking pretty good. It might be a little bit high still, but that's okay. Get the idea. And like I said, you wanna make sure to uh, so only have the point selected that you wanna move. Yeah, and that's definitely gonna be high. So I'm gonna move that up. Still give it that flat feeling. Now you can start to see how this is really effective because you know where Loomis had you draw had us drawing a grid and then projecting that grid. We already because we can copy. We already have our floor plan here in perspective, so we can just project off of that directly. We don't have to translate anything, which is awesome. So before you get into drawing it, you want to go back and you want to select that construction line, and you just want to take these walls and then draw a long line back across them because this is going to give you your vanishing point. And since this is two point perspective, you'll have two vanishing points. If you're not familiar at all with two point perspective, there's a lot of great videos on YouTube. I'm not gonna get into that too much here, but this is how it is done. And then your horizon line just goes between actually through, but definitely between these two vanishing points. All right, now from that, you can go back and you can select a pen, uh, make sure it's on automatic. I wanna to go to this fixed width pen that's on a new layer. 
and then you can just start drawing up your walls. So all your walls are gonna be just project straight up. And you can clean this up later. And then from there, you can either use your construction pen to project out from your vanishing points and just give you guides. Or you can just go ahead and use your fix with pen or whatever you choose to draw your perspective with to draw those in. You just want to always make sure that you're coming from your vanishing point so you're moving your hand that way. So, you know, for this, I really like to just take that construction line. But a good way to start sketching through this process is just to start, you know, figuring out the heights of things. It's a really easy way just to get a nice, quick perspective sketch. You can get a, always get a rough idea of where you're at with those vanishing points. And everything you have on your floor plan there is to scale, so that's really cool. So we know this is going to go up. We've got our bookcases here and our fireplace here. What I like to do, since it's digital, I can just go through this really quick and block this in. And I don't have to worry because I can always go through and uh, clean it up and trace over it later. But it's good just to kind of figure out what the heights you want things. Here I have this window ledge. Remember, I'm going back to that vanishing point there. And I don't take it too seriously because it's a sketch. Cool thing is you can see exactly where your mullions are. So I don't have to guess. And I think that just gives it a much more realistic feel. And just, you know, kind of shade for now. So you don't see that floor plan, just get an idea of values. And you can see how quickly, once you start to get the hang of this, how quickly you could just really generate rough perspectives. And the cool thing is that they're going to be uh, relatively accurate to your plan. Obviously, it's not the same as, you know, setting it up and projecting every point and having the heights perfect, but this is a really good in-between method. You can start to see your ideas come to life really fast in perspective, but you're not in having to invest, you know, as much time as you would to, you know, do it uh, technically correct perspective drawing. So it's really good for sketches. I've got my construction line. I'm just going to project straight up from that point. And then I want to select that. I have my finger set to select. So that's makes it even faster. Then I'm going to grab one, put it there, duplicate it again, get that third point. Cool. Go back to my base layer, select that, duplicate it, pull it up, make sure my points around the cor my corners are touching the lines, but that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that I get my view how I want it. So I'm going to pull this line down to flatten this out. Do have to be quick about it. And pull this up. Oh, that's looking good. Pull this in. Make sure I untap the last one doesn't have to be 100%. That looks really good. Okay, so then the next thing I'm going to do, once again, is I'm going to pull those construction lines back, get my vanishing points. That's going to help me out a lot, even if I'm just eyeballing it. It's really great. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my fix with pen, and I'm going to draw up those walls. I'm taking this out from here. So this time my vanishing point's a lot closer over here, so I'm probably gonna get some distortion on this wall. Draw that up, draw my chair in, draw my table in.
jacked up my fireplace and my bookshelves. And let's say there's like a cabinet up to 36 inches here. Be something that's likely this is really high. How I drew the ceiling, you could, you know, obviously take it down. I think this really helps you sort of work through what this is going to actually look like. You know, I'm starting to get a real good sense of this room just based on this. You know, maybe like I can actually go outside the room a little bit here. And make sure to bring this out so it has some dimension. And those vanishing points really help me to do that. even draw that rug in. Now here I'm probably going to pick a picture plane that doesn't include that chair because that would be really close. But I think this is really cool. You know, in this you can just draw you just draw as a rectangle. So even if you want to do a different you know, just imagine you're looking at it on a in the spread of a magazine. How is that view framed? It's probably a good idea not to do what I just did, but to actually thicken up that pen or to find a thicker pen and then you know and that feels really nice. And then you can, you know, zoom in, do some layers and develop details off of that. I would definitely advise you against, you know, trying to make these too precious.